to me, there's really fundamental truth, self-evident truth about development. It's really about two things, identity and activity. Knowing who you are, whoever that may be, and why you're here today, what you have to do. And individuals without those two fundamental truths are lost. Societies without those two fundamental truths become lost, which is why I think it can be particularly difficult for isolated societies, um, nomadic societies, to come to terms with what they see in the rest of the world, modern health systems, education systems, and they have to adapt. And it's a bit of a trade-off sometimes in terms of what they do give up and in order to take up. But it's, for me, it's their decision. And a part of the problem, I would suggest, of international assist assistance has been the distance to these issues, the distance that they, they have and have maintained for, for too long. I'm an economist. I've worked as an economist for 40 years. It pays the bills. But for me, development is fundamentally about people. It's not about monetary economics, fiscal economics, trade, investment, uh, business, and, and, and such. And um, I don't see development organizations having come sufficiently to terms with the best way to uh, assist people Take, and society is taking some very difficult decisions. Well, where do today. you see things going wrong? Because w and one of the issues here is whose agenda are they mm. meeting? Are they meeting their own agenda as a development agency? Are they meeting an, a, the agenda of the locals? And how have they established that agenda? What sort of conversation have they had with locals? What, where, have things, where have you seen things go horribly wrong? The, I've seen things go horribly wrong many times in many countries. Um, I'd say a fundamental part is just people don't talk. Mm. They don't participate. They don't engage in taking a decision. I mean, even tonight we're talking about what we, should we do. Well, it's not really our decision. I mean, the decisions on culture and development must come from the societies themselves, and they must be given the freedom, you know, the space to address the issues in their time and to decide for themselves. We don't always give them that space and that time. Beyond that, I would suggest that a lot of development it still tends to focus on the technical and the financial and is encapsulated within a fiscal year, a budget. And uh, there's such a tremendous turnover of staff in these organizations also. I, I, I don't see that lessons have been learned or knowledge has been gained. Um, and there's a political end to it. I mean, we all must know that. Um, development organizations have their own political economy or their own agenda, their own institutional mm. objectives, and they're not necessarily the objectives of recipient economies. So you know, some of the work that I've had to do, tried to do lately, more lately, the last few decades in, in islands, I've been able to do. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that um, I have been allowed um, the directions that I have, have promoted, which is you know, more participatory. Um, well, sometimes participation is kind of given lip service, isn't it? It's like, well, we'll absolutely. consult, and then we'll do what we want anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, I don't see you know, most organisations, uh, be they bilateral, you know, government, Australia, New Zealand, UK, Europe, US, whatever, or multilateral World Bank, ADB, I, I don't see them really questioning their approach. I don't see them uh, looking to outcomes of development and coming back and saying, well, what are we doing wrong? We seem to be repeating many of the same mistakes.